Riley back with Eric Vincent for this show, Beyond the Box, your favorite Detroit sports show with your two favorite Detroit sports hosts. Eric, we got a full night live. We want to invite everybody to drop comments, questions, thoughts, concerns, whatever it may be. Yes. We will be there to answer them for you. But here's what we're talking about tonight on this live, Eric. We've got some recent roster news, big pay cuts, some quarterbacks that are no longer with the Detroit Lions. And then we got one huge question that we've got to ask everybody in the fan base. Yes. Is the bandwagon full? All of that's going to come up tonight and more with all of your comments. But before we get to anything else, just want to remind you that there's a fun and interactive way to support our show and our channel, and it's called Super Stickers. Eric, talk to him about Super Stickers. Yes, indeed. It's called Super Chat and Super Stickers. These awesome features allow you to send us messages and stickers that stand out from the crowd during our live broadcast, making it more likely for us to see and respond to what you have to say. And it also helps support our channel and allows us to continue bringing you the best Detroit sports analysis and news. It's a win-win in every way. Really is, man. It's super easy. Just click on the dollar sign icon down below and choose whether you want to send a super chat or super sticker and follow on screen instructions. Your message or sticker will then be highlighted for everyone to see. So the next time you're joining us for a live beyond the box segment, don't forget to show that support and stand out from the crowd with super chat and super stickers. We can't wait to see what you've got to say. And we truly appreciate your support. Eric, we got a full show. So let's go. All right, let's jump right into it, Eric. And you know yeah. what? I I feel like we got to start right here because John McGee has already asked the question that we John are going to oh. address at some point. Yes. I think Ed Oliver's coming to Detroit. I personally don't think so, but I've been hearing his name thrown around. Hey. E, what you got, man? Hey, it's, this has been free agency where dreams come true. So, I mean, why not be able to wish on a dream? We all got roped into it. Uh, I don't know how accurate it is. I don't know if they would have the you know resources to acquire Ed Oliver. But that post was very interesting. What, it had him sacking the three NFC North QBs, one of which not happy to be Jared Goff on the list. So, I mean. Well, maybe... two NFC North QBs because one was Aaron Rodgers. And he's no longer. Uh... Right, but... I see what you did there. <laughs> you see what I did there, huh? Just want, just want to be truthful and consistent. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he's a. I don't know if that's gonna be a thing. Uh, it was definitely interesting to think about. But what we're learning about, what we're gonna talk about a little bit later, is it just adds on to the narrative. Detroit is a whole destination for the NFL, man. Everything is changing with this team. People want to play here. People aren't just laughing off the I idea know. of Lions now. Like, I know. Where, what, what is this? I, I don't know, but what's what's funny to me is I think that the internet got duped a little bit. You think so? I think so. Uh-oh. I, like, I think it's kind of Twitter at its worst, because if you go to his Instagram page, there's a picture of him sacking Jared Goff, too. Uh. So I think whoever tweeted that just forgot to include Jared Goff, <laughs> which is fine. Listen, there's nothing wrong with dreaming. Right. Here for it. Yep. There's nothing wrong with thing. And on the heels of other stuff we're going to talk about tonight, the, the salary cap that they created. Yes. The fact that they have the third most money in the NFL right now. Mm-hmm. Cap space, I should say. Third most cap space in the NFL, just shy of 27 million. They're at 26 and change. Mm-hmm. Like you might have thought, like, there's a little bit of some truth to this. Mm hmm. And there's nothing wrong with well-wishing, right? (laughs) There's nothing wrong with well-wishing. And to Joseph Palmer's point, that's right, Micah. Bam. Eat your words, my man. Tell him, Joe. 
Tell him, Joe, I like that. Meet him because Nobody Detroit is a retreat. destination and because people do want to play here because of what the Lions have cooking. Maybe that's what started it off. Maybe mm-hmm. Michael Parsons kicked this whole thing off, talking that trash, and now everybody wants to come to the D. What's up? <laughs> it's awesome. It's great. It would be awesome. Like, listen, if you oh. find a way to acquire Ed Oliver and have literally addressed every need except for backup quarterback. Now, listen, we talked about it last show. It wasn't a popular topic. I get it. We were not talking to replace Jared Goff. We no. need Jared Goff to be healthy next season. Yes. 100. Like, this team will be better with Jared Goff than a backup quarterback. Mm-hmm. But Jared Goff is also the only quarterback on the roster, That's which it. means if you want a Monra taking snaps, you don't sign a backup quarterback. Exactly. If you could go into this draft with literally every need filled except for backup quarterback, holy moly, man. Just unbelievable magic done by Brad Holmes. Like I said, I've been saying it. This has been easily his best free agency. Easily. Yeah, this is kind of like, and I don't want to say this like out of his road because he's still sticking to one-year deals, yeah. but he's addressing everything you need with not just rookies. Again, you need players with experience. You need guys that are able to help the young core be better next season, not just rely on their growth over time. You want to win now, you need veterans that can win now. That's what Brad Holmes went and got. And, and he's done it on the cheap. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're going to dive into this in tomorrow's show, so make sure that you check out our show tomorrow at 5 p.m. where we talk about the impact of C.J. Gardner-Johnson on the Lions secondary. But just to highlight it, just for a second, the second best free agent available, according to some experts, and we got him for a one-year prove-it deal? Yeah. (laughs) That's pretty awesome. One of the best defenders coming from uh, unbelievable defense. Like, I I, I still can't believe that happened. That's here with me and Ed Oliver. Like, why would he not highlight the safety he created on golf? Right. Like that would be the one. <laughs> and uh, according to his Instagram, Ed Oliver did. So I I don't know. This has been one of those off seasons that is just absolutely incredible mm-hmm. as a Lions fan. It is. And knowing it's not over, because again, you still got cap space available. They yeah. still could maybe because they've talked about possibly DJ Shark still being in contact with them. Uh, obviously the draft coming up in just about a month. We cannot wait for Yeah, it, It's still a lot more villain work to be done by Brad Holmes. He's turned into the true evil genius of the D, man. And I'm happy. I'm here to see it. So I want to shout out Dre, who said uh, with the super sticker, uh, pair character doing a Shaka sign with his hands saying cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> Whatever you want tonight, Dre, it's a weekend early for him, man. It's cool. Hey, Not the Dre Johnson. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, incredible offseason that continued over the, the latest news stretch. Listen, here's kind of the moves that have taken place. They re-signed Jalen Reeves-Maben, a special teams player, uh, oh, to gosh. take the place of Chris Board. Reeves-Maben was a, a lion for five years, went to the Houston Texans for a little bit, and then now is back uh, on – the Honolulu blue train uh, and then restructured how Vitae's renegotiated. I should say how Vitae's contract, Mm -hmm. the mess that Brad Holmes has had to clean up with these contracts that Quinn Trisha, I feel like there needs to be like a bleep every time I say that, even though we're live. Yeah. The mess (laughs) that he's had to clean up and the job that he's done cleaning it up, has been phenomenal. Unreal. Like if we were grading that alone, and you know I'm a tough grader. Indeed you are. <laughs> it'd be an A+. plus. It would have to be. It would have to be. Yep. 100%. Let's Here's start. what they did. 2024 is now a voided year. The mm-hmm. cat, cap hit dropped from $12.45 million, one of the highest on the team for a guard, first mm-hmm. of all. Not your left tackle. Not your quarterback. But for a guard who hasn't been healthy, mm-hmm. dropped from 12.45 to just over $5 million, providing mm-hmm. $7 million in savings against the cap. And going into 2023, 
you got you filled that garden need. Big time. Graham Glasgow. Yep. And now Hal Valitai. Yep. I'm I'm very because I'm gonna be honest with you. Brad Holmes came in, came in swinging immediately. His first big move was Stafford Jared Goff. So I'm sitting here thinking, goodness, are we, is this like some Al Davis like type stuff? Like what kind of moves is this guy going to be making? How aggressive is he going to be? But then moving from there on those cheap one year deals for basically two straight free agency periods, did awesome with that. And being able to cut off guys like Trey Flowers, cut off those bad deals that we were just speaking on to get the books right. And now adding talent to complement all that together. And I, you can say that he's doing it quicker than expected. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't think nobody expected him to be in this position this quickly. So they've had two Brad, seasons. Oh, oh. Did you really expect in year three to them be the favorites in the NFC North? Hell no. Like, in Absolutely all honesty. No and I think way. if Lions fans were honest with themselves, they would have to say the same thing. Yes. Yes. This was something that we thought was going to slow cook up for a minute. Like, okay, hey, it can't be worse than the other guys. That's what we wanted. It can't be for worse sure. than the last guys who were here. <laughs> he's sure. wiped them out completely from what he's done. Joseph hitting the nail on the head. Like, talented depth is so necessary. Thanks. Again, does the renegotiation of Hal Vitae's contract, does the signing of Graham Glasgow, does that affect their plans in the in the draft? I don't think it does. Like, no. if Steve Avila is there in the second round, I think the Horn Frog is going to be a Detroit Lion. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going – you need depth, too. And I wouldn't put it past them to draft a corner – I mean, this is a very deep possible. cornerback room. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, on the show tomorrow, we're talking about sleepers. So make sure that you tune in at five o'clock, like draft sleepers. Yes, uh, that the line should be targeting. And there's a ton of cornerbacks on the list. Yep. One of the highest graded by PFF. I was looking today that nobody's even talking about. You can find out who that is tomorrow. Um, <laughs> You like Good that? Teaser. Good teaser. Look hey, at you. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I can here. Ooh. I'm doing what I can here. Chris, a little, a little off topic, but yeah, sorry to the Sparties who lost to Kansas State. Mm. My bracket's still looking pretty good, though, so I'm I'm okay. Yeah, he's going to get okay. That's good. I, That's good. I, I'm okay. So a, a departure, um, and then I want to move to our big question for the night. Okay. A departure, Amani Awarie is no longer a lion. And good riddance. That's the segment. That's it. That's it. <laughs> There's See nothing else later. to say. There's nothing else to speak on. Like that Jim was the Carey move that had to be made. Dumber, like big gulps, eh? Well, yes. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> and, and to be able to go Jeez, to the dude. NFC East, go to the NFC East is on brand. I figured if anybody right. would jump on it, it would be an NFC East team. <laughs> right. Because what quarterbacks there do they have to expose him? It ain't Dak. That's for no, sure. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. The Washington Commanders, it ain't them. No. He plays for the Giants, so he. I mean, is Daniel Jones going to expose him in practice? Probably not. Not gonna all happen. he's got to worry about is Jalen Hurts. That's it. So why That's not it. sign to him? I mean, it's a perfect situation for him. He's off. He was awful last year. He was Very so bad. He was one. He was supposed to be a sleeper to take one of those next steps this season. That did not work out at all. Chris Mason, right on brand, man. Bye bye. Yep. See ya. That's it. He, See you later. That Minnesota game is going to burn in our hearts forever. What? How was it? Seven penalties, maybe, it if was, I'm not mistaken? It was six or seven holding penalties. Like, in a row, dog. Yeah. Like, he was, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, it, was, was, it was awful. It was so bad. Yep. But he's gone. Yes. He's now a New York Giant, and we'll see him later. And the one final thing, Eric, April 2024. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know exactly what you're talking about. The dates I would just are here. say, if you're watching this show right now, just make plans to be downtown Detroit in April of 2024. Yes. And here's why. The NFL draft is going to be there, and that's cool enough. Yes. But you know who's going to be at the bot at, at the draft? Broadcasting from that first round? It's going to be your favorite sports host. You know. That's and you're right. going to want to be there. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, you're not going to get better entertainment that night. Mm-mm. Than watching our draft show. Speaking of draft shows, just real quick before we get into the next segment, we are doing a live first round draft show this uh, this year, April twenty seventh. We'll kick off around eight o'clock. There'll be more details on a firm time, 
but just make sure that you are tuned in to that. Eric, talk to the people about Gear Up Detroit Shop. Yes, indeed. Hey, Detroit sports fans, did you know you can now rep your favorite team in style without even leaving this page? Gear Up Detroit store is now available right here on YouTube, just below the video you're watching. Yeah, so browse through our range of high-quality, unique, and stylish merchandise for all your favorite Detroit teams. We got the Lions. Go Lions. We got the Tigers, whose season starts next uh, at the end of next week. We got the Red Wings, who are on the up and up, and, well, the Pistons as well, because they are at least part of Detroit. So make sure that you get your favorite sports apparel without even missing the show. Indeed, and if you want to explore even more awesome gear, you can always visit gearupdetroit.shop for a full range of tees, hoodies, hats, and more, all designed by the most talented local artists in the area. Yeah, so for the next game, for the next show of Beyond the Box, support your local creators and make a statement with Gear Up Detroit. And remember, you can shop right here on YouTube or at gearupdetroit.shop. Now, here is the question of the night. Because there's been a lot of rumblings about the Detroit Lions. Is there any more room on the bandwagon? Or are we set? Do you see this? Yeah. What's this say? It says What's this Detroit say? versus everybody. Then that's, that's the what? rule. Stamp that. <laughs> no, ain't no more room in the club. Matter of fact, I'm the bouncer. I'm checking the list right now. Um, let's see. Good morning, football crew. Nope, sorry, you're not on the list. Um, ESPN, nope, you're not on the list. Sorry. Detroit versus everybody. If you've been with us 10 toes down through all the hard times, you're allowed at the club. You're allowed the fan group. For you, new fans, there's no room for you. I'm sorry. I can't allow it. So here's my thing, and I'm going to add a little graphic to our uh, show here. If you were not here with us in week oh. 18, mm -mm. you don't get to come week one of 2023. Not at all. Don't start giving all the blowhard acclamation to the Detroit Lions who were doing things right at that time and you still chose the greasy-headed Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> greasy-headed You can't see it because the photo is kind of small, but if you looked at his head in that picture, my man looked like he hadn't showered since week three. He look. He looked like he don't shower ever on a consistent basis. So well, what I'm saying <laughs> is, if you were not with us in week 18 when we believed and we said they're winning in Lambo, we said it. If you weren't there then, you don't get to be here now. There, there, were, there were plenty of people who jumped off the bandwagon in the middle of last season when they That's started true. off cold. If you jumped off then. You don't get the hop on now. I don't care how cool they look now. You ain't allowed. I'm sorry. It, it's it's all over the place. Y'all just talked about it, man. Matthew with the comment of the night. It's nice to finally have wheels on the way. <laughs> Perfectly put, my friend. Way well to go, Matthew. done. Absolutely yes. well yes. done. You now, here's my question. Right here's my question, though. Somebody like Rich Eisen, who's a yes. Michigan man. Mm -hmm. Is there room for him? He's allowed. I like Rich Eisen. He's he's you know he's pretty. Uh, and Tony Dungy, the only Lions logo in that photo was Tony Dungy. <laughs> Just for that alone, I'm not the biggest Tony Dungy fan, but for that alone, for that alone, we'll, we'll let Tony Dungy. He can serve punch in the back of the club. We'll I mean, let Tony he, in. He did end up, you know, giving us Jim Caldwell at a certain point, but we can forgive him for that. And yeah, well, like we'll we'll call it even at this point, right? Yeah, that's fine. We'll call it even. At this point, let's see. Uh, I want to see John right here. He says, if you weren't with us since you started being a football fan, you don't get to be one now. I'm with you. This goes I'm back to you. our this goes back to our fan conversation. Yes. If you've ever if you've ever talked about the lions, like, oh well, it's just the lions. If you wrote us off and that was your review on us coming to a game, you don't get to be a fan now until you admit your wrongdoing on that point. I don't want to hear it. <sighs> I'm I'm with you, man. I what I don't here's what I don't what I don't want. I don't want the media this whole offseason 
Because that's really who we're like yelling at, right? Yes. Like Colin Cowherd, you don't get to be oh. like, oh, the Lions are the cream of the crop. Mm -hmm. And then at week eight, when we're like five and three, potentially go up, oh, not just same old Lions, because mm -hmm. that's exactly what they're going to do. That's exactly what it that's is. That's exactly what's going to happen. So don't even give us the lip service at the beginning. Yep. Just say the cynical old media head that you are. Yes. We'll and, and you know what? It, it's, it's actually, there's fans that talk like that, too. There's room for them. We'll give you guys some time. I know there's still some Lion fans that are leery and a little worried about the lackadaisical performances they've had for years and decades. We'll give you a little bit of time. But you new national media folks, y'all <laughs> stay over there. Don't come over here trying to co-opt our homegrown media. Exactly. That's why we're here. And that's why y'all are here. We and appreciate y'all. that's why you tune in. That's Damn why right. you tune in. Uh, Want to see some comments dropped in the chat? I have seen some. So I want to get to some of those. Here we go, Eric. John oh, McGee wants to know, who are you taking with our first two picks? Oh, man. Has your strategy changed at all given the offseason? Yeah. Trade up. <laughs> That's <laughs> where my move is now. Before okay. I was okay with best player available. At this point, trade up and go get Will Anderson. Like That's my philosophy. And if I don't know if it's going to – it will probably cost you the second pick. I'm okay with that if that's the case. If not, you can take best player available at that point. I'll be okay with whatever they decide. I don't care. I'm with you. I and I've agree, and I even brought that up a, a few shows ago, right? Like they're mm -hmm. in a position now to be like, "Hey, we really want Will Anderson." Maybe they don't want Will Anderson. I don't know. And maybe right. they're sitting here looking at the Jalen Carter news like, "This is kind of working out perfect for us." Yeah. Right. Yep. All I care about at six, there's two things, actually. One, you don't draft a quarterback. I'm not. I know we've had our discussion about Anthony Richardson. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't think they'll even be there, but it's okay. I, I don't think they will either, but I'm not. I'm not okay. taking a quarterback. Okay. I think you can find your backup. In this draft, I don't think you find your future of a franchise in this draft. So don't draft. That's a good take. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Number two. Number two. You've improved the secondary. You yeah. know how else you improve the secondary? And we've talked about this. Oh, get their best friend. Get their best friend. Yeah. You get, get the guy who's going to smash and drag people in the front seven. Yes. Whoever that is. Like, yes, it'd be awesome to trade up and get Will Anderson. If Jalen Carter's there, I think it's a no-brainer. Also not going to be mad about Tyrese Wilson. Mm -mm. Also not going to be mad about, uh, like, Cansey from Pittsburgh. Cansey, from, love but I'm not taking him at six. Right, no, no, well, well, first one of the first two yeah. picks. But, yes, if at six, right. I'm, I agree with you, yeah, yeah. for sure. So, depending on what I did at six, if it was Wilson, then I'm looking – I'm probably depth creating depth in my cornerback room if Joey Porter Jr. is there. Okay. I feel like if you walk away with two defensive players, like the best two defensive players available from 6 and 18, yep. your draft is then wide open. Mm -hmm. You could take the best tight end with your first, second round pick. Right. You could, you know, finagle in a, a Cheney from Texas A&M, the, the running back. Well, on that, I've seen Mox now that got Bijan around 18. What if he's there? Would <sighs> you package 18 in the first, second overall pick to move up a couple spots and get him? No, 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 no. We're not doing that. <laughs> I don't know. What is, is, are you on to something? What way? What, what, what are you trying to say there? It depends. There, okay. Listen, again, there's so much cap space and there's still time. If they were to like if they were to have gone and made a deal for Ed Oliver, right? Mm -hmm. Then yeah, I'm taking Bijan at 18 if he's there. Yeah. Then you can afford it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd even consider, and you're gonna fall out of your chair, but Quentin Johnston, if he's there, a wide receiver. <laughs> I'm okay with that, but coming from you, I know. that's rich. <laughs> yes. I know it is, but all the needs have been filled. This is another one. This, this might be 2B. 
I'm not like Mel Kuyper came out earlier this week with his mock, and it was I forget who at six, but it was Michael Mayer at 18. Okay. I feel like there's tight ends available in the second, third round that you could get. Yeah. Not to waste 18 on, I don't know. I Maybe I'm like so uh, traumatized by Eric Ebron and First round TJ Tigers Hawkinson and that I'm like, Hedigrew. no, no, it's a hard and fast rule. No tight ends in the first round anymore for at least yeah. like five years. And then it kind of resets. After yeah. that, we're good. Yeah, I, I, even with the great stuff that they've done in free agency so far, I still think every Lions fan would go. Someone Arr. brought him up. I don't mean to cut you off. Chris Sims. I don't know how we forgot this name, but thank you, John. He's there the, is no worse club. talking head in America than Chris Sims. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm not a wasn't fan. Even a, wasn't even a good college quarterback that I no. remember. no. And yet spouts off like he's some kind of expert. God, he's no like, he's no Dan Orlovsky. In terms of what, backup John, quarterbacks like, as media members, Dan Orlovsky clears. John, thank you. Thank you. That that was a pull that I needed. Well because seen. my goodness, Chris Sims. Well said. Y'all are fired today in the comments. They are. Absolutely. Well hit us hit us up with a like too if you in here. Hit us Your up boy. with a like. Your boy right there. Oh yes. Chris. Chris, you and me. If we get Simpson, it's over for the league. Chris, you got to check out the over. show tomorrow, man. We're going to be talking all about these guys. Yes. We're going to be talking all about these guys. Uh, here's here's a question. What would you think about drafting Darnell Washington at 48 and using him as our goal line running back? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and- <laughs> Y'all are just <laughs> okay. 15 at this Justin, point. Justin, you choked me up there. Uh <laughs> Go for two every every TD. Um, you would. It's a Six, decent eight, strategy. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Montgomery gives you a good enough power back around the goal line that you don't need to put a rookie tight end there. I know Michigan did it for years uh, where they just line the tight, up end, tight end up at, at fullback and give them the one-yard dive. Like, I, I get it. It can work, but... It's also the NFL. Like, yeah, the guy's six seven and huge, but he's also going up against defensive linemen that are six four, six five, and outweigh him by probably a hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. So, I I like the idea. I don't know if I would vote on that idea in the affirmative if I were given the option. You won't put no money on it. No, that hey, that bit Johnson creativity though. You never know. Hey. <laughs> I put mean, this a pass to Panay Sewell for crying I was, out loud, I'm right? going to tell you, yep. <laughs> next season, Panay Sewell or Hutch. One of those two are catching a touchdown next oh, season. Oh, yeah. You heard it here first. Just oh, wait yeah. on it. I cannot wait. Yeah, we, should, we, we should do like a little uh, like a little book, you know, crazy things that might happen next season. Because <laughs> you never know with Ben Johnson. So You never know, right? Mm-hmm. Jared Goff might throw a touchdown left-handed just to prove. Oh. He has then, staying power. Yes. Right. Then the conversation is over. You won't <laughs> yeah. hear a word out of me at that point. Nope. 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 <laughs> He'd be like, Lamar, who? <laughs> Left handed. <laughs> <laughs> Draft what? Okay. Watch this. Yeah. Here we go. This is what I'll call it DSM prop bets, but don't take gambling advice from Eric and yes, myself. Yes. No. Who no, I yeah. don't think have ever placed a sports wager Never. in our lives. Yeah. If you Other bet than you- fantasy football. If you bet any kids daycare money based on our advice, that's <laughs> your decision. Don't put that on us. <laughs> that, that is do not that. on us no. at all. So, okay, I got to I gotta give Joseph a uh, shout out here because he – remember, I couldn't tell you who Mel Kuyper had us taking at six. It was Jalen Carter. Okay. If we get Jalen Carter at six, then I might roll back my no tight ends in the first round rule. <laughs> Right. At that point, then you can afford it. It's no problem. Yeah, but if you end up with like a Tyree Wilson or maybe you've traded back, Cansey from Pitt is the target at 18 yes. if he's there. Totally agree. Now, there's so many variables, right? There's a good chance that the teams picking in front of us are not going to be picking in front of us the day of the draft. Right. This is going to be an insane, insane first round. Yes. Just buckle up, and we'll be there to cover every single bit of it. Oh yeah. Um, 
because it's going to be insane. Like, I'm anticipating it's a month away, a month and four days away. And I think about it at least like twice a day. As you should. Yeah. As you should. Not for research purposes, though. No, no. Not for (laughs) research purposes. Like, just thinking about, like, okay, I could be okay with that. Mm -hmm. I could be okay with that. And here's the reason why. Brad's a bad man. Evil genius. He it villain. He's the evil villain. That's right. He's a villain. And I really think there's a good chance the Lions are not picking at six. Whether they trade up or trade back. I don't know. I totally agree. I don't know. I don't, there's it's not going to be a lot of city still in this draft. <laughs> We've kind of answered this a little bit, Justin, but that's okay. We can go at it again. Like, the number one wish is that Will Anderson falls to six. Yes. That like literally five teams trade up to take five run, uh, quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. And maybe somebody loves Quentin Johnson and, and they take him at five. The dream is Will Anderson falls to six so you don't have to trade up. I would settle for, and I say that facetiously, tongue in cheek, I would settle for Jalen Carter to be there at six. But it's just got to be somebody up front that puts a hurt on a quarterback that makes the improved secondary that much more improved. Yeah. I think it's kind of wild that Jalen Carter is now looked at as like a second tier uh, prospect at this point. But I mean, it's kind of where he settled to based on what's happened, but yes, easily as Will Anderson is the number one hope. If you get any of the secondary guys, you can use that and then maximize it even more with the number 18. So yeah, Jalen Carter is well within those wishes and Will Anderson as well. We, we got people wishing for Scott oh, to return. What? Oh, this is a wild <laughs> mat. Come on. You were doing good, buddy. You were doing good. Doing I mean, you no, know he I would guess, not. <laughs> listen, so he was the quarterback during my formative years. Oh. Do you know what I remember about Scott Mitchell? What, tell me what. The interview where he had a pillow in his sweatshirt and a cigar in his hand imitating Wayne Fonts. I do remember that. That's all I remember <laughs> I about him. That. I don't remember the way he played. I don't remember the way he threw the ball. All I remember is that doggone interview. He was a lefty, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he was a knee lefty, yeah. Okay, so I remember two things. He could throw left-handed, and he made fun of his coach with a pillow and a cigar. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) No, he's another one of the forgettable names in this era. We got to – it's strictly forward. It's strictly forward. We took enough of a gamble bringing Reeves Maven back to look back and forward. But now, strictly forward for this regime. Okay. We're going to get to Huggy Bear because they have a great question, but I wanted to touch on this. What would you do if Holmes traded up to three with the Arizona Cardinals and took Anthony Richardson? That would be nasty. Not in a good way. And I, I, I don't, I'm not like everybody else. I have faith in Anthony Richardson. I think he'll be okay. I'm not tripping out like everybody else about some of his play in college, but trading up to get a quarterback? You're asking for that. We're talking about him as an evil genius and a villain. That's villain in a bad way. That's not what we want from Brad Holmes. No, 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 Justin. I want to be very diplomatic in how I answer this. Don't. <laughs> no, because I mean, it's a legitimate question from Jason or Justin. Sorry, Justin. Justin. It's a legitimate question because I think that's a, what's on a lot of people's mind is he's the best athlete of all the court, the quarterbacks. Yeah. trading up to get him at three. Yeah. If that scenario that is on the screen right now happened, all of the good juju from the free agency will have been gone. Yeah. You've ruined what you've done, essentially. Because you have built through free agency in a way that makes your team infinitely better. Mm-hmm. Your weakest, your weakest part of your team is now the strength of at least a defense. Right, probably the second best unit you've got on the team next to the offensive line. Yeah, probably so. The goal in team building would be to add to that. Richardson's a project. Yeah, you don't trade up to three to take a guy you have to sit for two to three years. It just 
I know the 49ers did it with Trey Lance. And that was dumb. I like Trey Lance, but that was stupid. Did the Packers trade up for Jordan Love too? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Late first round. Okay, they traded. Yeah. I mm, I no. I would be I, I would let me just tell you this. We're doing our show live for the first round. If this scenario happens on the screen, there's a good chance I'm not finishing the show. You go walk out or your head finna explode. Either way, it's both. gonna be hysterical. It'll be both. <laughs> You'll be cleaning up brains from the set. Because I it'll be awful. I remember the reaction of the Lions fans when Eric Ebron was drafted. At that time. was bad. This is gonna be 50 times worse than that. Especially, Again, I'm on the I'm on sorry. real quick, I'm on the side where I'm okay with them taking a quarterback. I'm not right. on the but I'm okay with it. There's some guys I like and I'm not against the idea. But trading up to get one is totally different. No, that would be horrible. Especially, I think it's a different conversation if Goff doesn't have the year he had in 2022. That's fair, yeah. He showed he was capable of winning football games. Mm -hmm. And has the potential to be the guy at least for two more years. Right. You don't have to love it. You just got to live with it. Yep. Right? Which is okay. Like, if Jared Goff is our quarterback for the next two years, and by all accounts he's going to be, yep. that's not a bad thing. Nope. Not against it at all. So you don't, at, at this moment, we've said from the beginning of draft talk, this is the most crucial draft for the Detroit Lions. And you will ruin the draft if you trade up for Richardson. For sure. Here's the question that I wanted to get to from Huggy Bear. Let's say they draft Tyree Wilson at six. Then would targeting Siaka Ilka in the second round be too soon? It all depends on what they do at 18. Right. But what are your thoughts? Uh, I wouldn't hate it. Again, it's another trenches player. And the lines have even talked about themselves. You need... As they, there's no such thing as too many pass rushers. There's no such thing as too much depth on your defensive line. I wouldn't hate it. I mean, again, it addresses a need. It addresses a place where, you know, you're going to be prioritizing your defense. So, nah, I wouldn't care about that. That'd be fine with me. So, the Justin said, you want a backup QB. Look like it's either late free agency signing or must be the draft. Yeah, we laid out uh, a few free agent options. I mean... I mean, Cam Newton has resurfaced for crying out loud. I'm not saying I want Cam Newton. I'm just saying it's a viable. I mean, you're, you're, the two best backup quarterbacks probably available are Teddy Bridgewater and Cam Newton. Everybody else after that's like signing David Blau again. Exactly. So you could sign one of those two and still draft a quarterback in the late rounds. Yep. Tune in tomorrow for a sleeper. <laughs> I mean, that, that's where we're going to get to. Let's get to one more comment, okay? One more comment, and I'm going to look through. Okay, this this has been said twice, so I want to make sure that it gets credit. So the fact that we have all of three DTs, who else thinks we need one in the first and maybe the best DT who falls to the fourth? Fourth, because we would uh, we will trade for a fourth round pick. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's John again, right on the money. You pulled out the Chris Sims thing and. Yeah, the the that's why Jalen Carter is a dream scenario, if they're cool with drafting him with everything that's going on. Right. Cansey from Pitt, a great idea at eighteen if he's there. Mm -hmm. Ilka was brought up, a great option in the second round, maybe even your second second round pick. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised if they double up positions. I wouldn't see them right. doubling up quarterback. I wouldn't see them doubling up running back. I wouldn't see them doubling up wide receiver or tight end. But I bet they go after a guard. I bet they get a cornerback at some point, probably draft a safety at some point, and a linebacker or two, including defensive tackles as well. Yeah, the bigs you got right now in the D-line, they're more so just serviceable role players. You need one that's going to be a game-breaker, that's going to make those guys better, that gives yeah. McNeil some single uh, yeah. coverage opportunities, Bugs, uh, Kaminsky, and then the two edge rushes as well. So, yeah, you need one more, maybe even two, like you said, uh, to kind of capitalize on that. I'd be yeah. okay with one or two. It wouldn't matter to me. 
for sure. Well, Eric, we're going to sign off. But I, before we do, I want to remind everybody that we're now doing Beyond the Box Live twice a week. Monday nights at 9 o'clock, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock as well. Giving you real-time analysis like we did tonight and insights to the latest Detroit sports news. That's right. And if you love these live segments, you'll definitely want to check out our Deeper Dive episodes on Tuesdays and Fridays at 5 p.m. On these days, we go beyond the surface to take a closer look at the impact of the news on our Detroit sports teams. We analyze strategies, break down key moments, and explore the long-term effects of the latest developments. Yeah, it's the perfect way. And you all know because you've been here to gain a deeper understanding of your favorite teams, specifically the Detroit Lions. Plus, we're always adding fresh content throughout the week through clips, uh, different highlights, other in-depth analysis, and special features. So make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Yes, indeed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and join us for these live shows, deep dive episodes, and everything in between. Let's go beyond the box together and celebrate the best of Detroit sports. It has been a great night with all of you that stuck around. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great Thursday night. Catch our show tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Here's what's coming up on that show. C.J. Gardner-Johnson's impact on the secondary. And some draft sleeper names that you need to keep in the back of your head. Piggybacking off of what we talked about tonight. Yes. He's Eric Vincent. I'm A.J. Riley. This has been your favorite Detroit sports show, Beyond the Box. We'll see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock.